guess I might just mention. Oh, you know, come forward, please, and state your name. <clears throat> I'm Gary Burnett. I'm with the Drinking Water Program out of Pendleton. So I've addressed this council many times in the past with the original surface water treatment rule. And I guess just one emphasis is that we're, uh, Bill mentioned it, but we're, we're locked into the EPA regulations. And so when the state uh, agrees by primacy to administer those regulations, we can't be any less stringent than the federal rules. And so, uh, that's, that's kind of the basis of everything. So we're, we're really locked in to, to what those rules say. And years ago when I addressed the council, I brought up the point several times that this, these rules could be a moving target and forever changing. Um, the Safe Drinking Water Act was passed by Congress in 1974. They started uh, promulgating that act in 1976. And then every 10 years thereafter, we had amendments to the Safe Drinking Water Act. So the original surface water treatment rule was in the 1986 amendments. And then, and that was really profound because that added a whole bunch of other things, including chemical sampling that drastically increased uh, all the regulatory aspects that made the drinking water monitoring much more complicated. 1996 began the enhanced surface water treatment rule, the long-term two enhanced surface water treatment rule. And as Bill mentioned, a lot of these rule changes and the basis for the EPA regu regulatory process is waterborne disease outbreaks, or if they discover some contaminant that has become a problem, then they write a rule for it. And in today's world, you know, it just, we, we've come to a point where it's getting really complex because you could you could pick a number that is probably in the 99% realm that the current rules and everything leading up till now has covered 99% of the health risk. But the whole idea is prevention of public health problems, and so the world just seems to be driving it to more and more uh, potential safety and minimizing the health risk. And you're not the only ones facing this. Uh, there, there's Ben that we work with directly, and even uh, a close by neighbor is Walla Walla, Washington. And they're still unfiltered. But back in the 1990s, uh, Walla Walla had to install a second form of disinfection. They, they installed ozonation. But in, in their case, it was way before the enhanced surface water treatment rule, but it was because they could not meet the raw water criteria for bacteria. You, uh, the city takes a number of samples, that's part of the unfiltered criteria. You have to meet the raw water quality for turbidity and the raw water quality for bacteria counts. You have to have a watershed program and you have to have what I call super duper disinfection. Those are the key components. And so EPA made it very difficult and I think I, when I addressed this council back in the 1980s, I said that if you choose to remain unfiltered, they're going to make you pay. And I think nationwide that was basically the implementation. They just they put so many criteria and so many things in the unfiltered regulation that it, you know they, they wanted it to be more difficult, I guess, than to try to encourage people to install filtration. And so as time goes on, it just gets more and more requirements. And as Bill said, if, if anything goes wrong, it could come to a point where the unfiltered exemption could be revoked. And I mean, that's speculation because, and by the way, you know, you, you have good water quality here. You have good staff, you've been very diligent. And just reviewing the file, uh, the city was commended many times by the Health Division Drinking Water Program for the actions you took back in the 1980s. You were very, uh, very diligent and uh, timely in pursuing uh, all the issues to bring your system into compliance. And so I think that's still true that the city's to be commended for the operation of their 
their water utility all these years. Believe me, I know I've been uh, I've been involved in this for a long time now, and I I was manager of the water utility in Walla Walla. So I, even back in the 1980s, it wasn't easy with all the expanding regulations. 